220,000 deer on only 465,000 acres is like literally an ecological disaster when they, you know, when they're consuming uh, seven to seven and a half pounds of dry feed a day. Mm. So we like to think of it locally from, we call it like mauka to makai. So like mountain to ocean. Mm. So I'll just, mm. there's lots of like small things, but I'll give you guys the big ones. Number one, please. We're the most isolated landmass on the planet. Water is our most valuable asset, yeah. period, end of yeah. story. Deer in our watersheds, i.e. in our high elevation, seven to 12,000 feet, which were designed to capture cloud. That whole forest is like a giant beard. Like it's able to just like soak in cloud mm. and like move them down into our aquifer. Deer decimate that understory and will affect recharge by 50%. I.e., our, our forest will capture 50% less water with an established deer population. So you come downslope to what I think of as our food system. So from 7,000 to like shoreline, this is where all of like our food is grown. This is all of our roadways. This is all of our people. So obviously like deer on roadways is a pretty obvious like bad. But yeah. more importantly, what they do is a, they compete with dry feed for our ranchers, who a lot of them are, are trying to move to regenerative, which is awesome. Those ranchers are the only reason Hawaii looks the way it does. Those ranchers are the only reason these marginal ag lands haven't turned into like gentlemen's million dollars estates crawling up the hill yes. because they've been able to like yes. maintain these beautiful open spaces. So like that's big one, number one for community. Number two, and this is regen specific, soil mm -hmm. those deer have these tiny little lips on like a cow and they'll eat that thing straight down to the dirt and they pull it out those last ones they'll pull out and root so they will denude an entire landscape these are volcanic soils that they take thousands of years to make the soils hundreds of thousands of years and you get these rain events which are more unstable than ever and guess where all of that soil goes it's going down straight into the ocean yeah. yeah, it's a 45 degree slope. Past that shoreline is our near shore fisheries and reefs. And there's two really big ones. One for community, that is, they call it their ice box, but like that, all of that fish is food. Those near shore fisheries in that level of abundance is so valuable to community in the long run as a food resource. And that sediment and soil will cover the reefs, choking them out. Mm. And you kill the reef and then the fish are no longer able to exist there. But That's two, cool. which is really... Two, which is really interesting, is what do people pay for when they come to Hawaii? They pay for that beautiful blue water mm -hmm. sitting in front of their hotel. And mm -hmm. when that beautiful blue water is mud red mm -hmm. and like you're unable to even like swim in it, the collective loss to community as a function of like economics, ecology, yeah. and there's a lot, there's a lot more layers into this as well. Yeah. But when you think of it from mountain to ocean, like even just that, if you were trying to put like a, a dollar figure on what is the loss, it's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. 